So as this global crisis is unfolding, we're watching a lot of videos, reading a lot of articles about uh, how not to catch the virus or what to do if you do catch the virus. And these things are really important, but I wanna talk about something a little bit different today. I wanna talk about the much more likely perspective, which is what do you do if you don't get the virus? Or what will you do after this big life interruption? And now, now we're asking a fun question, right? Because having your life interrupted is actually really powerful. I mean, any big pattern interruption gives us time to think, to reconsider our priorities, and to pivot our post-interruption life accordingly. So let me give you some examples. I've had so many great interruptions. So uh, 15 years ago, I had this big pattern interruption that changed everything. I took two weeks off just to build a little addition on my house with my friend Livio. And when I went back to work, I was shocked because I realized, oh, just having that interruption in two weeks not at work, I realized I'm not interested in this job anymore. I'm not interested in have, sitting in this office. In fact, it feels like I'm probably just getting paid to warm up a chair, <laughs> right? And so it's like, okay, I know I wanna pivot this post-interruption life towards something new. So I was asking myself, okay, what do I wanna do in my post-interruption life? You know, I don't wanna go to the office anymore, so that means some kind of work from home. I wanna live somewhere really beautiful and inspiring. And I wanna do meaningful work that feels like I'm adding value and I'm actually helping people in the world. I didn't have any answers to how these are gonna play out. Like, where do I wanna live? I don't know. How am I gonna make money? I don't really know. And that's okay. So when we're pivoting in a new direction, we just have to know where we wanna go, okay? And I start kind of moving our life in that direction and we'll find out the details as we go. You don't have to worry too much. Like for this particular pivot, within a couple of years, I had done all those things. I was living in Sedona. I didn't have an engineering career anymore. I was working as a healer. I was getting ready to just let go of the last little bit of the job. You know, I'd been working kind of half time and it's really, really scary to pivot like this. And my friend, um, Annie Konovich, she said, well, you can always pivot back, right? If it doesn't work out, you can uh, go, you know, buy a house you can't really afford, move back to Denver, get a job you're not so interested in and just kind of do the same thing as before. It's, it's always worth making that, making that change and just finding out if the new thing is what you wanna do. And um, it's funny, because as you go in a new direction too, in this kind of, like I said, post-interruption life, you may have to do some things that seem kind of illogical to you because you're getting into new territory. So I'll give you a good example. So for me, I was thinking about, okay, now that I've had this interruption in my, in my pay, I'm no longer getting a salary, one of my financial desires, what do I want this to look like in the future? And I decided, okay, two things. I wanna make 100,000 a year, and I wanna donate 10% of that to charity. These two seemed really important to me. And then I got this really clear message right behind that, once I had this clarity that, oh, these are independent things. I could do one of those right now. I could donate $10,000 to charity right now. And this was really scary. I was like, okay, I don't really wanna give money to charity because I don't have that much and I'm not making any but maybe I could give away a hundred healings. You know, my healings were about a hundred bucks a piece then. So I was like, oh, a hundred healings. Um, I'm gonna give those away this year so I can achieve my half of my goals right away of giving $10,000 to other people, $10,000 worth of services to other people. Now, the interesting thing that happened was that seemingly illogical choice gave me lots of clients, lots of exposure, and helped me build that business to a hundred thousand dollar a year business. So uh, thinking a little bit differently or taking a little um, illogical approach can really help when you've made a big interruption. So another funny one that I did, so about a year later, I was, I was seeing these clients. That was my main job is healing work at home in Sedona. And all of a sudden my clients went to zero. It's the first time that it happened. I'm like, I have nobody scheduled this week. I did all my normal you know, routines to kind of attract people and zero. Again, really scary, you know, an interruption like this you know, makes you think, oh, what are my priorities, what do I wanna do? And I just looked around, I thought, well, you know, energy doesn't disappear, so it probably went somewhere else. So what else could I do if it wasn't this? And I thought, well, I do have an invitation to go start traveling. I've got clients that have asked me to come to their place and work with them in their business and their home and their families. That began this many year journey of traveling and healing and teaching. I had no idea it's where I was gonna go. I was just responding to the interruption. So instead of getting stuck in the fears and trying to force things to work the way they used to work, I was responding and saying, what could I do differently? What else is available? I looked for opportunity, right? Interruptions are always huge opportunities. 
another big one I had was, you know, when I met Hisame, my wife, and um, I got married. This was a huge interruption for me because I was traveling around the world and teaching, and I was kind of starting to get some traction in this teaching career and speaking career. But when I met her, I realized I just want to be with her. And she lives in Japan. I, I wasn't really thinking about moving to Japan ever, but here I am living in Japan 10 years later. <laughs> right? So this huge interruption, very unexpected. And it uh, didn't seem like the best timing, but I couldn't complain, right? I mean, my priority was I wanted to meet this uh, fantastic, uh, beautiful partner, and I met her, and we got married. So I just so I made a pivot. Okay, I'm going to move to Tokyo. I don't know what that's going to mean. I don't know how it's going to play out. I don't know how my financial situation is going to look. I don't know exactly what I want that post-interruption uh, life to look like. Soon after I moved, we had, had this really big interruption, because I moved here in the beginning of 2011. So within a couple months, we had the Tohoku earthquake in Japan, this big tsunami. Uh, Fukushima was having a nuclear meltdown. Uh, for that first month, uh, we were having two aftershocks a day in the six plus range, right? That's, that's huge, that's a huge interruption. And it really made me think, hmm, what's important to me right now? And I realized the most important thing was living my life today, rather than living my life for tomorrow. So instead of planning and taking action that'll get me a great future, I want to live my life today. Because there's, there's really no guarantees, right? And we're, we're seeing that a little bit right now, right? I thought, ah, my real need right now is to polish up my rough edges, to deepen my connection with my wife, Hisami, and to, and to grow, to grow spiritually. It's like, wow, okay, so what's the way that I can do that? What's the biggest lasting contribution I can make to others and polish my rough edges, deepen my connection with Hisami, and so on. And this is how I ended up in the, the project of mine right now. We're making this beautiful project together that's really bringing us together. So right now, when you're going through this big change, I want you to um, ask yourself that. So ask yourself, what do I want to do in my post-interruption life? Are there things I'm doing now that I'd like to let go of? Are there priorities that I'm not taking care of that I want to start taking care of? Again, you don't have to have the answers. Just kind of notice, you know, if you have this awareness that you want to change, change will happen. It may take a month, it may take a year, it may take a few years. That's okay. You have time. Your life is unfolding. But at least have it unfold in a new way. You know, make your post-interruption life into something that's more exciting for you than what you have right now. And of course, that, uh, that first question I mentioned is really important. So how can I make a sustained, lasting uh, value for other people, right? I think that is like one of the big questions you can ask yourself right now. And then I want you to just look within because your answers are not out there. They're not in somebody else's head. I don't have your answers. And then you want to you wanna take a risk. You want to do something you believe in and make that difference to others. And then be patient. Let your changes unfold. That story I told you spanned nearly 20 years, right? So it, you know, lots of pivots when I had interruptions, and I didn't know where I was going. But surprisingly, I ended up in this very amazing state. And this particular interruption we're having right now made me realize that because we have this global emergency happening, but very little has changed in my day-to-day -day life. I'm already living a post-interrupted life. I work from home. I collaborate with others remotely. I work on what I believe will make the biggest impact on others. And even though I work a lot, I never get paid in, for any of my hours. I only get paid if my efforts help people, right? And that's the way that I want to do it. So, you know, I spend, um, honestly, most of my time just focused on growing up, deepening my relationship with Yusami, uh, breaking my natural tendency to think too much and to measure myself by everybody else's values. In short, I'm really enjoying my life and doing my best to help others. And you can do that too. Use this interruption as an opportunity to pivot. How do you want to pivot your life? Not tomorrow or next week, but in the big picture, how do you want to live? And again, I can't tell you, no one else can tell you that, but you can look within and you can discover that for yourself. It may take a little time, a little practice, but you have that right now, right? You've got some extra time. So why not use that time wisely? Turn your awareness within. Just, it's really easy. You can just close your eyes, breathe, 
relax your mind, and connect with your inner truth. It's there inside you. Enjoy.